live. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good to have you on Facebook tonight. We're going to try to, I'm going to try just a moment to get YouTube going. Oh, wow. We can get, try, try to have both. Yeah. Then we can have other people join. So, so this is Curology Tuesday, which um, the Lord instructs the Pastor Tracy to do a couple of years ago, it seems like, maybe a year yeah, and right. a bit. Yeah. And as, as soon as, soon as uh, the big March shutdowns. Okay, so uh, that was kind of like a year and a half. Yeah, it's we well, yeah, just right around that time you have to do something for people. Yes. Right. Yes. We have to bring people along. Um, you know, some of us have been walking with the Lord longer than others and uh, the Lord wants us to bring everyone al along and if you have a shepherd's heart at all like Jesus, you want to bring people along and um people have been raised in all sorts of thought patterns, beliefs, um, but we need to teach people what God has to say. And so what God has to say is that he has victory for us, he has bought salvation for us, he has bought healing for us with a costly, most precious price, and that was the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. And, um, you know, it's amazing because that blood bought everything for us. <laughs> you know, I don't think uh, we, we can fully grasp what is available to us by the blood of Jesus. People try to grasp all sorts of things in life by other means, but the blood of Jesus has given us complete freedom from sin and the punishment of sin. Uh, an entrance into the kingdom of God so that we can actually walk with him. And it's amazing because Jesus said, you know, that his, his path is very narrow and it's hard to find for people because it's not uh, a path that where anything goes. You know, <laughs> the kingdom path is very specific, very narrow, and it is exclusive in that it doesn't include other religions. It doesn't uh, include other lifestyles. It doesn't include other thoughts of uh, patterns of thoughts, trains of thoughts. Uh, we can't climb in through the windows into the kingdom. There's only one door, and that is Jesus Christ. And of course, we all love people who have not yet uh, entered fully into that. And and um, that's what I have on my heart is. This is a season where we must be all in. Come on. hundred percent all in. 99% is not good enough. You know, if you think about our shepherd, Jesus, the shepherd of our souls, um, his, his flock, he wants it to be complete. So he's giving the parable that he's like the good shepherd that if one sheep wandered off, that was not okay with him. He wants everything all in everyone all in and he gives a lot of very intense and absolute statements most most of the statements that jesus gave even though he was dealing with a religious uh people group that already believed in god come on they believed in abraham isaac and jacob they believed in moses they believed in the in the stories of esther and ruth and all of david's writings and solomon all of it so they weren't he wasn't dealing with atheists new agers um you know he wasn't dealing with woke people <laughs> he was dealing with people who in their mind in their estimation were radically going after god i mean the way they dressed the way they ate the way they did their hair Everything was completely different from Gentiles, from, from those that were far from God. Yet Jesus comes and ramps everything up to such levels that even his disciples who had walked with him, who had seen him do miracles, including raising the dead, who, who you know, even, uh, even did miracles themselves, come on, received some of the first fruits of the Holy Spirit operating on them can you imagine they were common men walking with jesus and jesus releases the anointing of the holy spirit on them to do the same works he did and in the past that only came upon prophets and kings and here are these common fishermen 
that receive an anointing to heal the sick and cast out devils, demons. And they, when they came back, they were like insanely, overwhelmingly happy about it. Come on. Because here you go growing up in an environment where that was only for the top, you know, zero, zero, zero point zero zero one percent of people ever. That was for David. Come on. That was for some of the kings. That was for, for the prophets, but not for fishermen. Come on. But Jesus, Jesus uh, said that if you will, will come after me, pick up your cross and follow me, lose your life and follow me, then you can have all of that. And there's so much on the other side of that tiny little gate, that very narrow path. But this is a season where all the pressure in the world is allowing uh, us to make a decision that we're either going to be all in or we're not. And it's, uh, it's painful. It's a very painful season because we're all praying for loved ones and people we like, people who are even religious. It hurts to see that they have not yet stepped onto that narrow path and to go in through that very tiny little narrow small gate, Jesus calls it, which is himself. That salvation is only through Jesus and you have to lose everything in order to gain it. You have to let go of everything that's old. You have to let go of everything you thought was okay. You have to let go of your own thoughts and your own ways in order to be part of this kingdom. And so, you know, Jesus starts saying this thing to people, unless you eat of my flesh and unless you drink of my blood, you cannot enter into the kingdom of my father. Okay, now at this point, you know, the disciples had tolerated a lot of stuff from Jesus. They were like probably rolling their eyes a few times here and there because it was like, why do you have to be so controversial? And the people who loved him the most, his own mother, his own brothers and sisters couldn't even walk with him in that, in that season of his life. It was just too much to handle. It was so extreme that even the disciples left him except for his 12. And then Jesus turns to them and says, do you guys also want to go? Because go ahead, right? And then Peter says, obviously he wanted to, but he says, Lord, you have, you're the only one with the words of life. So we can't, we can't go. Now that's, that is the, that is the moment of truth right there. That's where the line was drawn for the disciples and of course later when things again didn't go quite the way peter thought and the other disciples thought because they all ran away they all fled right um they uh there was another line drawn and jesus is not afraid of that we have to understand that jesus is not afraid of drawing a line and saying look you either come all the way across the line and come on my side or you can't have any of it <laughs> So, so here Jesus is, is very extreme and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we only say that when it comes to his benefits, but he, we have to understand that Jesus is still the same way when it comes to decision giving, yeah. that he expects complete faith in him, that he, he expects us to have complete obedience and that we live by his word that we, that we live on the narrow path, that we live in righteousness. Come on, he believes so much in his own righteousness that he believes that we can be completely free from sin, that we can, be, that we can have his righteousness to such an extent that it's so powerful that it obli obliterates, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> of course not. Obliterates, <laughs> probably a TH. Um, <laughs> All, all works of the devil, all temptation, all, uh, you know, lies, all pool of, of sin because his righteousness in us is so powerful and everything in the kingdom of God is so powerful. I realize that the people that have a mighty measure of the kingdom of God in their lives are very extreme people. You know, you don't think about people that were kind of conservative that had great miracles. They No, they didn't. 
they were extreme people still to this day very extreme people we just you know sat and talked of course with my brother-in-law our brother-in-law tommy odell he's a very extreme person we heard how he slapped somebody for for laughing at a scripture right <laughs> then he said say it right say it with the right attitude with with honor for god's word and when the man said it then god healed him okay so god is not even afraid of a minister slapping somebody because think about it the people were dishonoring his father and he came with a whip and he knocked over yeah. tables we gotta have that jealousy for god that people either honor god and obey god or get out of here <laughs> come on we are gonna completely buy in sold out christianity you know years ago you were prophesying i don't know if you remember this but uh, about this move of god that we're on the brink of or maybe it has already started i feel like it has because if darkness has increased then the move of god has yes, increased yeah, it is sure. at the same time two waves come on and so um you know but you prophesied that uh we would hear it again sold out salvation that people would be sold out that people would be uh radically saved, yeah, radically, saved. radically saved and radicals see the kingdom of god the bible says that the kingdom of god suffers violence come on and we don't even know to what extent violence from the devil right violence of the religious they crucified jesus violence of sinners who mock jesus and and still mock us and and they take down our social media accounts come on <laughs> the kingdom of god suffers violence but the violent take it by force the violent end up having entrance into the kingdom of god you have to become an extremely uh, sold out person in order to walk in health in order to see miracles you know, I think about John G. Lake, how intense of a personality he was. One day, he's doing a church service. Well, he was starting to do a church service, and we used to do this when we were in um, in Des Moines and in Seattle. We would stand at the do exit door uh, at the end of service to shake hands and, and, and bless people on the way out right and that's a very traditional way of pastors you see that even in catholic churches the priest will stand outside by the door and just greet each other and say hello to all the children and all that stuff so we were doing that and 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 here john g lake did that at a service uh, at the beginning of service he greeted everybody and he did not like how people were coming in and he became very irate <laughs> He told everybody, get out, go back out and come back in right. Come back in with thanksgiving in your heart and praise on your lips or don't come in at all. <laughs> and everybody went back out of the church building and they came back in right. Now this, I'm saying all these things, you know, Smith Wigglesworth, how intense, you know, uh, even, uh, what's her name? Uh, he, uh, Catherine woman, Kuhlman. Catherine Kuhlman such extreme personalities when i first heard about her lifestyle she wouldn't even minister unless she had prayed for six hours come on prayed for six hours she just wouldn't do it um and so here here we have very extreme people but they all had the kingdom of god manifesting through them in a way that was outrageous yes. that was outrageous even william seymour yes. you know william seymour uh he he was not even allowed to be in the room at bible college he because he was a black man at that time in the 30s i think it was he had to sit in the hallway but he didn't quit he he finished his whole uh his whole study in bible college in humility in embarrassment on a wooden chair come on in the hallway trying to listen to the to to those that were giving the lessons how embarrassing for those teachers now right yeah. they're with the lord hopefully um but he ended up being such an extreme personality so extreme in his humility that he wouldn't even pray standing up even in the revival when everything was breaking out and 
that the Lord was pouring out a spirit again, he would put his head in a wooden crate on the floor in order to pray to God. Come on. Such extreme personalities. And I'm doing a call right now, clarion call, saying that unless we become completely radical, sold out, we become men and women who put the word of God first in their eyes in the morning. Come on. Who put, who put prayer first before everything? Who walk on a narrow, narrow path that if there's any doubt, even a hint of doubt, we stay far away from it. If there's even a doubt if, if it's pleasing to God or not, we completely cut it out of our lives. If, if, if there's any other way that, that, that people are offering us happiness, <laughs> we're, we're going to stay away from it. We're going to go through the narrow gate. We, with violence, must take this kind of approach to the kingdom of God. Because uh, I was reading in, in Matthew 7 and Mark 7, Today, I, I thought I was reading Mark 7 by accident, but I, I realized it, it was not by accident because it goes with Matthew 7. If you read Mark 7 and then you read Matthew 7, it's so powerful, but Jesus is saying that it's very difficult to find this narrow path. Hmm. That's what he's saying. He said this, this path is narrow and it's very difficult to find it and only a few will find it. Now That's that amazing. means people, yes, that means people it's not even it's 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 difficult to stay on it it's difficult to find it difficult to find it because the everything else is an easier option everything else is more inclusive everything else is way easier you know if you would go to the woods and someone said okay you know there's this little path it's really hard to find it come on what do you do you get a flashlight. You get a flashlight. You come prepared. You don't go, well, I'm just going to go walk around in the dusk and I'm going to expect to find it. No, the, the, the light of the word of God would have to go with you. Come on. In order to find the ways of God, we have to become real women uh, and men of the word Amen. of God. Amen. Not just women. Cause no, I, know, I said that. I know. Yeah, but... You, Man. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. Gonna be, I'm going to be about those men. Yeah, be about it. <laughs> I can't be about it. Well, I can, but I mean, uh, I, I want you to know that it takes uh, us all ramping up. If we already think like, oh, I'm 100% in. Are we really? I mean, you know, uh, who was that? I don't know if it was John Knox or um, one other. Well, there's actually several in England revivalists that would preach and people would say, how do you draw, you know, 10,000 people? And in, of course, in those days, cities were not that large. The population on the earth wasn't that big um, in the 1800s and 1700s. Maybe it was Edwards, somebody like that. But he said, you know, what I do is I, I, just, uh, I, I just make sure that I'm on fire and I watch, and I, and people will come and watch me burn. Yeah, they say that's Wesley. Oh, John Wesley. Mm -hmm. So he would stand up on a table, come on, with no microphone, nothing. But he would start preaching the word of God with fire, with complete conviction, with complete power, with the anointing, with, with such uh, an abandonment of the world to the word of God. He said, and he would just make sure that he was burning hmm. and then people would come and watch him burn for the Lord. And, and that's how it is. It's so extreme. And, and many in Matthew 7, uh, Jesus says, will think that they are actually on the narrow path. Why? Because of some of the miracles they're doing in the name of Jesus. Wow. Because of the prophesying they, they, they're doing. But even that is still no guarantee. It is doing the will of our, my father, he says, yeah. and not any works of lawlessness. So if there's any lawlessness in our lives, and he goes on to talk about all sorts of lawlessness, how we judge people and, you know, just a bunch of different things. He says, then, then the, I will say, I never knew you. Get behind me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, of course, this is the chapter of terror. You know, I've told you that many times. This is when I first discovered it. But I remember being about 15 years old 
And I had seen a lot of things already in ministry. I was born um, as the baby of six. My parents were in ministry. I grew up in ministry. It's all I've ever seen. Every day of my life, I've only seen ministry. And I've seen a lot of garbage. I've seen a lot of sin in ministry. I've seen a lot of double standards. I've seen a lot of vile activities um, firsthand and and through my family members uh telling us what they what they had seen and and you know it's so extreme to see that but that's what he's talking about you believe that you have faith yet you have works of lawlessness at the same time and i remember being 15 and um i talked to the lord i remember the whole conversation i was sitting on my bed and I said, Lord, how can you stand it? How can you tolerate it? I mean, how, how do you let these people get away with this? They are supposed to be pastors and preachers. And how can you do miracles through them? How can you do it? And, you know, the Lord showed me this passage that in the end, it's the angels who will come. And they will go throughout the whole earth and bring in like a harvest everybody together they're going to bring the tares and the wheat together they're going to harvest come on the goats and the sheep together everybody by the grace and mercy of god until tomorrow's celebration right is that tomorrow's celebration starts tomorrow evening. the trumpets um yom kippur so uh, Jesus, one year, it could be tomorrow, it could be another year, he's going to come back on the Feast of Trumpets. Well, yeah. well right? this season. This season, this month, come on. So, so what I want you to understand is when that happens, that's when the separation is going to happen. And there will be a great falling away of those who many of us believe uh were right and they healed the sick and they prophesied but at the same time they didn't get rid of the other stuff and that's that's where we're at right now yeah. that's where we're at that's what you you've been saying lately and then just last week and this week we've been hearing other prophets also say uh multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision yeah. we are right now in the valley of decision where we have decided to decide that we're either all in or not at all because the mixture is not going to cut it and th there's such an amazing um power of the kingdom amazing manifestation of the father's kingdom when we decide you know what i'm going all in i'm going all in i'm going to be a hundred percent in the word of god yes i'm going to give myself to prayer I'm going to give myself to the, the, the call on my life. I'm going to give myself to works of righteousness. I'm going to cut everything off, everything off, even if I'm wondering if maybe it's okay. Others are doing it. I'm not hurting anyone, you know, cutting it off because these works of righteousness are going to cost people the kingdom of God. Wow. The Bible says that liars... People that that uh, have uncleanness in their lives, you know, uh, covenant breakers, those that are disobedient to parents, all sorts, all sorts of sins. Get in the word of God and find out they will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, I, I heard this religious man say that today, like preachers need to stop preaching too much grace. OK, you can't stop preaching too much grace to receive salvation. Come on, that is a, such a big, big grace. We are extreme on that. There's not one work that you could do to earn your salvation. It's all free. But when you receive it, you have to be all in. There's there's no mixture allowed. God will spit lukewarmness out. He wants all hot. Better to be all cold wow. than lukewarm. And so uh, this is a challenge for us and those of us uh, believing for healing it works the same way you know I am just challenged uh, by the Lord to, to, to be extreme uh, if I'm going to be used by God the way I know he wants to 
uh, in in next levels and the way he wants uh, even just my personal health to be. I mean, I don't have to go to the doctors. I don't have to go to the hospitals or anything like that. But there's always little things that we tolerate, you know, that people say, oh, that's normal when you get older. I was listening to a video today of this man. He was recording sound in this mall in another state. And he was saying, do you hear this high frequency? And he said, you know, if you're under 35, you can hear it. If you're over 35, you probably can't hear it anymore because your hearing goes. And I was like, what? And so he, he increased it, but there's many malls uh, that are doing that. They have these high frequencies to, to deter younger young people from the mall because their theft, theft goes down. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Uh, and I was like, no, that's not okay. I claim those frequencies in my ears in the name of Jesus. I want to hear all the frequencies that God gave me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And get my frequencies back. Yes, from, I want to listen back I'm to the video. I'm taking my frequencies from Prince. From Prince? Yeah, Prince. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, anyway, he's little red Corvette. He's not not alive anymore, so that's not very good. 1999. Stop. Well, those are that's what. I, that was the frequency. Yeah, no, those. Oh, were, you lost your frequencies by listening to that garbage. And by being in his concerts. Yeah, see, that's no good. That see the fruit, Sheila see e. the fruit. Stop saying all the names. I was only allowed Christian music and, and some country. <laughs> uh, Andre Crouch was the most extreme for me. He was wearing knickerbockers, um, you know. Yeah. So anyway. Guns and roses. Oh no. So I want you to know, praise the Lord for your salvation, taking all your frequencies back <laughs> in your ears. Skin, skinny puppy. <laughs> But we want to be extreme, <laughs> is my point. We yes. got to be all in because faith doesn't work halfway. Faith yeah. only works complete. How do you know that? How can you say that? Uh, because faith is dead without action. And yes. you don't take action on faith unless you're all in. <laughs> Come on. You can't, you can't take that step on the water unless you're all in. Peter couldn't be like, you know, some of those, uh, have you ever seen those little babies? They try to take a step, but then they change their mind and then their leg starts <laughs> sliding, you know. Um, okay, that doesn't work with faith. you got to be all in. Peter, when he went on the water, he put all of his weight on the water. Come on, he, he walked on the water. You can't, um, you can't have faith and not act on it. And so that is an all-in thing. And it's a beautiful thing because, you know, you may say, well, I don't have an extreme personality, so I guess the kingdom of God's not going to work for me. Or, you know, I don't have that much faith. I, you know, I still deal with fear. I still, I deal with a lot worse things than, than some frequencies I don't really need, right? Um, so, so, but this is the thing. If you give yourself to the word of God, faith will come. If you say, Lord, I want to be all in. I want to be radically saved. I want to give myself to the word of God. You know, Teal and, Osborne, Teal and Daisy Osborne did that. When they had no miracles, when they were complete failures, and we heard this week, they had a monkey and pooped all over their piano and over their guitar strings. Come on. Uh, <laughs> they went back in complete strings, humility yeah. Uh, to Oregon, back to their little church, and they realized, well, we are utter failures. This did not work for us whatsoever. We, How are we going to go back to India uh, with miracles, with Jesus working personally with us, doing signs and wonders and miracles, right? So um, they decided this. Actually, Daisy did. She said, honey, let's read the Bible, the New Testament. We'll start in Matthew We'll read the book of Matthew and we'll just start doing everything it says exactly the way he said it. <laughs> and that's how they got miracles. They went back to the Bible. Their faith grew. And then their faith became alive because they started acting on it. They started doing what the Bible said. Isn't that awesome? So no matter what circumstances we are in, it could be that you are uh, fighting serious things. 
addictions. We're going to pray for that tonight. Um, uh, thoughts that are demonic, that are uh, that come from spirit of death, spirit of destruction. We're going to come against those today. Uh, we're going to come against spirits of infirmity. Um, but we want to have a life where our whole body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and not even a cold can touch it. Come on. Not even a cold virus can come and live in our bodies. That's where we want to be. We want to be all in, radically saved, radically a temple of the Holy Spirit because we don't want to be part of the great falling away. We want to give not even a foot to the devil, the Bible says. Wow. Not even a foot. Not even, well, let me just stick my toes through the no door. No place. No place to the devil. We want to find that really difficult path to find. We want to find that tiny little gate that we have to go through. Uh, we want to go through Jesus the gate. Jesus the way. Jesus the truth. Jesus the life. He's the only way. We have to get rid of everything else. Amen? Amen. That's my challenge. To me first. And Great. then to you. That's wonderful. Well, if you if you were looking to get into one of our healing rooms, this is a great yep. message to set us up, right? To write your faith. Yep. But be extreme about it. Yeah. Don't be like, well, I'm going to try it. No, you have to, to be determined. You have to actually yep. make up your mind. Healing is mine. Healing yes. is mine. And you know, it's really it's really powerful if you can set yourself up with that extreme faith and to to walk in that. Um, the healing rooms are, are all filled for tonight, but you can continue. You can register for next week, next Tuesday. Yep. If you every think you Tuesday. can be around every Tuesday, we will pray, give you the special attention that's needed for you to possess your healing. Mm -hmm. There's so many people. It's really amazing to me. There's so many people struggling with physical ailments yep. as believers, as believers. And in it, I, it, it's not that we never, you know, believers don't ever get attacked. The, the, the difference is um, there's options for you. So there's options. And so there's a lot of people that don't take advantage of the healing rooms or these things that we do teach. Every, every week, I was thinking as you're teaching, for the last, I mean, year, every week, Every Tuesday, let's say for the year, it's been longer than that. But longer, for, yeah, way longer. I, and in March, I remember the first thing I had started was one minute cure yeah. every day, one minute cures, and then we moved into curology, and then we moved into the the healing rooms. I think mm -hmm. in the, in the middle of summer or the end of summer, so it's been over it's over a year in just the healing rooms itself. Yeah. But I was thinking every week, those of uh, that are our team, they're making comments every week. There's people on here that are listening to teaching and training on health and healing every single week. The, the, yep. the scripture is fully alive. Uh, so I realized this week how much more knowledge we have towards healing than, you know, the common Christian because we meditate on it at least once a week. We, you know, once a week we're meditating on healing and yep. health and maintaining health and healing. And we're meditating on the power of health and healing. Mm -hmm. We're meditating on the word of God and God's promises and and that's really powerful, especially when, you know, there's there's this attack that's happening in the world. It's not only the body of Christ, but I think right. it's, it's the world. And last year we we went through the three the three feasts, yes. um, the three feasts. Yeah. And, and and as we went through the three feasts, the Lord was very clear on the attacks against the feast that the enemy was up to. The 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 feast, the first feast, which was the Passover, uh, which was, you know, we were supposed to apply the blood of Jesus, blood, the blood of the lamb to the doorpost and passed over. Mm -hmm. Most believers were focused on taking communion. That shows us that our, our application, how to apply what's available to us is in the right season is very important because you can, you can take communion when you're supposed to put on the blood. When the death angel's walking by, it's not your communion. It's the blood that protects you, yeah. washes over you. So if you realize that these are the three things that we get every year, so then the next was to be infilled with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would come, and that was during the Feast of Pente Pentecost, the Pentecost Feast, mm -hmm. Shavuot. And that was when the day of, day of the law was given, new standards were given and this also in the day of new testament in the new testament on the day of pentecost the new law was given written on your heart and your mind mm -hmm. so that's a new establishment but it's written by the holy spirit and yeah. in that the biggest conflict that happened was coronavirus came out during the, i mean it was really hitting right right before the uh, the the passover yeah. then then the george floyd and the racial tensions happened right before 
uh, Pentecost, which was Pentecost is the, the most unifying feast of, of cultures and nations. Yeah, whole new uh, nations. It, it's, it's the most time of unity. Well, it, was, it became the time of destruction and, and the pattern was broken. Then the, then the Feast of Tabernacles, which, you know, this, this whole season of Rosh Hashanah to uh, Yom Kippur, this is that season. That's why I said it's a season because mm-hmm. it could be in, but I think it's, you know, the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm-hmm. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles, when the trumpet is going to actually blow, and the Bible talks about the trumpet in the taken away, that's the same trumpet blowing. So the, the trumpet blowing, that's supposed to be a unifying, but and more than that, it's supposed to be a, a kind of a, sac- a sacred and separating to the work or to something. It's a atoning time, a time of being cleansed. Now, I feel like this year we've mm-hmm. seen the spirit of, of death just just going uh, across the, the nation, the world. It's like amazing. Yesterday when, uh, you know, young, young Cho has went on to be with the Lord. I mean, great hero. Uh, we honor him. We honor everything. But I was really just like, man, what's going on? All of these people that we're hearing, what left to right, the people are dying or sick. And it's a spirit. It's a spirit that's that's on the earth, but it's not to touch us. Mm-hmm. We're so, I want to just encourage you before I just share anything, the, what I want to share now. I want to encourage you that you have the blood of Jesus. You have the yes. scriptures. You have this every week. We're contending with you to be yeah. healthy, that you would not have the uh, coronavirus or any other yeah. sickness or but disease. Or, you know, you know, it's amazing. I know I can. I don't know if it's I don't know. I don't know if it, what I'm about to say is true. But sometimes when I'm around people who actually get the vaccine i almost i feel like um i could smell it and i don't know if that's true i don't know if that's i don't know if that's in the spirit i don't know if that's i don't know if that's it what that is but i i also know that in the past when i would get around people who had certain things certain sins in their life certain certain strongholds i could actually smell i could smell it i could smell it in their life i could smell the spirit the spirit of of homosexuality the spirit of of of, of addictions uh, or different kinds of addictions. I could smell it. Yeah. Um, and so I want to, I just, I don't know why I'm saying that other than the fact that there is, you need to be confident that if you're around these people and maybe they are super spreaders or, or whatever, you know, they, they're so, if you're around them and you're not vaccinated, you still have the power. It doesn't matter what, Nothing if they have on. spikes or if they have swords, doesn't matter what's <laughs> happening. Doesn't matter if the, 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 the devil himself sneezes on you. You're going to have so <laughs> much authority, so much power. I mean, he's the yeah. coronavirus walking, right? Yeah. You, you have so much authority yeah. in the spirit of God that it doesn't matter what comes your way. Yes. You have that authority. Jesus. You have that authority. Now, authority is something that must be implemented. It's not something that you just have. Mm-hmm. If you have a badge and a gun, you never show your badge, you never use your gun, then you're just as someone who doesn't have authority. Because right. authority is about the actions that you take, is what my wife is talking about. It's yeah. about your ability to to actually mobilize and, and, and call upon the resources that you have to fulfill the authority in your life. Thank you. And you have that. Yes. And so I want to just encourage you, just, I'm going to just, I have, a, I, have a, I have a scripture I, and a couple of scriptures I want to give you, but I wanted you to know that there's a lot. So you can actually go back to Citadel Church. If you're on Citadel Church, you're on yes. this, you can actually go back all, as far as you in last year. If you're struggling with something, if you're, if someone's in your family struggling with something, you can go to every Tuesday for the last year and play the, the best parts of mm-hmm. those, of those meetings these gatherings like this, you'll see us there or Pastor Neela or someone else, you'll see us delivering the word yeah. of life for you to get healed. And if you, and it's, it's there for you. It's, and it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I just yeah, was thinking about it. So it's, much revelation. The amount of time we put on here, it's, it's actually, we put as much time as we would put in a broadcast. Yeah. We could actually go and put in a TV broadcast yes. and broadcast it. This is the same kind of thing, but we're doing it because we know God's intention is for you, his yep. people, to be absolutely healthy. Yeah. So I want to I wanna just move into, um, I want to just move into something teaching. else. teaching. My yep. teaching. Is that all right? Yep. All right. So this morning we are men's prayer, men's prayer every Tuesday morning on Zoom, 7 a.m. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can let us know, men. Uh, we have a special link for men to jump in Zoom and pray. Yes. Uh, we pray together. But as I was preparing and walking, I walked into my, my office. And I, you know, I'm always in my office. I'm, <laughs> I'm in my office all the time, and yeah, I, I you do see a lot something. Of meetings, I, I see, I see this book, 
And it's not it's not on my bookshelf like this. It's it's laying down on my bookshelf. And so I just see the face and I'm thinking, that's so interesting to me. I've never noticed that I have this book. And I don't know where this book came from. And, and it's called Being Mortal. Being Mortal. And it's just inside of me, I go, that's not what I want. I don't want to be mortal. Because in the first thing in the scripture I'm, we're going to read here in a moment is is about, and I don't know what this is about, but it, it, I, I read the, the subtitle and it says medicine and what matters in the end. And, and it the could be a very, in, yeah. in what matters in the end, you yeah. know, so medicine and what matters. And I don't know what he's, his end is. I have no idea. I don't even remember getting this book, but somehow either someone gave it to me because I'm always given books. Yeah, because it's not something you would buy. But being mortal. And it could be like something because I, I, I see some of the uh, back here, you know, Malcolm Gladwell is one of the one of the people who endorse it. And so he's, he's usually someone I like to read about and read his stuff. And, you know, there's different aspects of it. But being mortal caught my attention. And the first thing that hit me was the scripture. Mm -hmm. That, that says that the Holy Spirit in us quickens our mortal bodies. And this is saying, I have a mortal being. I'm a mortal being. And so I realized at that point, I'm not a mortal being, and I don't have the same belief system as this title, being mortal. I don't have that because yeah, I'm constantly... Yeah, that's not how you identify. I, the Bible says I am being quickened. Yes, I'm, I'm being, constantly. I am being quickened. So this, am I, am I a, a mortal being who's, or, or am I a quickened being? And that's really important for that's us to great. know, because if I'm a mortal being, that means that that word mortality means to have an expiration date. It has a reserve mm. date to end. Yeah. It has a, re a reserve date to be it finished. It's worse. done. It's the expiration yeah. date on 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 milk. Milk has expir expiration sure. date because it is mortal. It's mortal. It has a death. It's in a death sentence. This being a mortal is about you having a death sentence. You have a sentence mm -hmm. and a some some kind of inscription that says by this time your time your ticker whatever it is is going to be finished. But I believe that there's a scripture and I'll read the scripture for you and then I'll tell you the story. A Romans 8:11 and it says but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Now that's a big if. It's not really a big if for a person who knows but yeah. you've got to make sure you know. You've got to know that the Holy Spirit, he lives in you, dwells in you. And, and that word dwells literally means he's, you are, you're his house. Because if you're wondering, then... You're his house. <laughs> and the fact is, is you need to know that if I'm the house of God, then there's no way he wants busted shutters. And mm -hmm. if, I'm the, if I'm in my, in my house, I don't like broken stuff. I mean, if there's anything that's broken, I'm, I'm there. I'm trying to fix it. You go on YouTube. I, I go off on YouTube the other day, you know, something was going on with the, with, you know, our, our sink and it wasn't, you know, the, the garbage disposal. And I was like, push, and I, I know enough about it to know if it, it what's wrong. And it was nothing with the garbage disposal, but it wasn't, it was, it was not moving. Well, I'm like, oh, well, I can't, I, I'm going to go on it right now. Cause I don't like yeah. it. I don't like stuff out of order. I don't love st like stuff broken. I don't like, I don't like that. And I'm going to actually do a a barrier buster tomorrow at 12 o'clock on my my Facebook and on my YouTube about broken stuff. It's yeah. called window, Broken Windows. And that's going to be a real good time. But um, I don't like, so I need to get busy on it right away. So this is telling me that if I'm the house of God, yes. if I if I treat my house that way, <laughs> and I'm God's house, I know we think we think if I'm, God, I'm God's house, it's like God is in my pocket. Right? It's kind of like, I have a little pouch in here and God's in my pouch, right? No, God is saying, you are my house if yeah. I'm dwelling in you. Yeah. Now, you've got to make you got to make that picture clear to you that you are God's house. You are God's, I mean, you are your house. <laughs> You're a dwelling place for God. Yeah. And so my house doesn't get mad at me if I'm trying to fix something here. If I, right. if some, if the, you know, the screen doors, you know, the kids sometimes, you know, it. I've had to put it, he, he's like, he he wants to fix it because he doesn't want to dwell in a broken down house. He doesn't want to live in a house that's falling apart. It doesn't represent him well. No. It doesn't give him good flow. I mean, can you imagine? He cares you know, about where he lives. La this last a couple of months ago, you know, we, the heat was kicking. Hey man, our our air conditioner was just not working. Yeah. It was like woo. It Barely. was like it was not even keeping up. So I go out and we see that it you know the pipes are freezing up out there. So it's working, but it's not getting in here. What's wrong? We call the air conditioner guy. 
and it got fixed. And believe me, this house and my house and we are all very, we were all very happy. The realization is there is something about fix, fixing the house you dwell in. And God says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So let's first of all, recognize the, the one he's recognizing. He's not saying just the savior. He's not saying just the father, but he's saying the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. So this spirit is a dead raising spirit that lives inside yeah. of you. Anything that's dying or dead that's inside of you, he's coming after it because that's his thing. Yeah. He's all about, I mean, if I'm in the house, if I'm in the house, you know, we lived in a house where there was an electrician that lived there before us. I mean, he did all kinds of stuff. He was all busy doing work, right? He was lived in. So an electrician works on their house. A a a a, a cabinet guy works on their house. A, yeah. a, a, a designer works on her house, right? You there, can tell who lives there. You can tell who lives in there. So if a guy who is, or a lady who is used to kicking out death lives in this house, then guess what's going to happen? Death is going to get kicked out. Yes. <laughs> out of out of their body. completely Come and on. it's not even it's not even it's going to be the most irritating thing if you are a cabinet person and you come home and your cabinets are just swinging yeah, and hanging. It's so irritating no. it, because you go and you see other people's beautiful cabinets. That's so true. And, and you, got, you, you are not going to just sit there and tolerate a, a broken down cabinet mm -hmm. with the fact that you know how. It's just three screws there. You put those, you just, it's going to take you 15 minutes to get it done. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit is. Now, look what it says. It says, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, he's made you his, his house. He yes. made, he's made you his dwelling place. Yes. So can I tell you, the coronavirus is a spirit of death. Yeah. It is, it is, it is the thing that's trying to kill. It it's to trying to steal. It's you know? trying to destroy. Yeah. It's a destructive force. It's a destructive thing. So guess what? The Holy Spirit is not like, oh yeah, I can live with it. No, he's not going to live with it. You know, the, the vaccine has been devastating and it's been death the option of rolling the dice or spinning your you know like you know you know spinning in right that trusting that that, that that that's you know that 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 russian roulette we can't it, it, you, you know i got another testimony of someone today if someone had their second shot their second shot and they have now ms it's and this is a a ceo of a hospital Second shot, and now they have MS, and they have to leave. They can't work more than ten hours a day. I mean, more than more than half of their day. Sorry, and then they have to go and smoke weed the rest of the day in order to handle. Now that's a Russian roulette. Now so that to pain. me is stealing, killing, and de destroying. That's the spirit of death. Now, now that's completely. It's your prerogative. It, it, what you're going to do with your body, yeah. but you have to know. It, I'm the 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 first thing that the Holy Spirit said. And the first thing God said about this coronavirus during this season, he says, Tracy, I want you to know and I want your family to know. I mean, I, every time I say it, I say it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And even when I'm around people that I think that smells like, you know, the, the, the vaccine, <laughs> I say it. I'm like, you've not made me, God, you've not made me a host of, of COVID, but you made me a host of the Holy Ghost. Yes. I mean, I, I say yes. it because I'm like, and then I giggle. It just like puts such kind of joy. Yes. I mean, it's almost like ridiculous. <laughs> it puts such we kind of hosts. joy because it's like, I feel this, this, this like excitement and side yes. of me it's not that i'm getting like woo, i'm better than you it's like this bubbling of going yes. i don't know if it's me or the holy spirit Easy. going yay i'm in my i'm in a house i'm in i'm in the house that welcomes me yeah i'm in a house that's excited for me yeah. i'm in a house that wants house to right i mean this is the house and it says you, you he said you don't host you don't host COVID. You host the Holy Ghost wow. only. That's powerful. That's what he said. Only. Yeah. What is he saying? You are my house. You're my house. Yeah, I can't stand And my house things. is not going to allow some violator. He's not going to allow some break-in, some kind of you know thief who crawls through the window, some kind of destructive force. You can, but you've got to treat it. You've got to say, this is God's house. And the Holy Spirit lives in there. He's this. He's the spirit of life that overcomes the spirit of death. And he's so good at it. When the devil put all of his forces to kill Jesus, Jesus came out of the grave. Yeah. Jesus popped up by the same spirit that lives inside. I'm getting all preachy and excited. But by the same spirit that lives inside of you. Now, this burglar, you got to see him as he yeah. is. This burglar COVID. This this is a burglar. He's this seeking. is a this the yeah. devil has hired and has trained has developed a spirit of called the spirit of death who's come in the in the identity of COVID 
and, and cancer and every other thing. You've got to realize whose house are you? Not just whose report do I believe, but whose house am I? Now, I know people that I could, if, you know, I've got some, I've got a pretty interesting background. I could, I can see gaps in people's security. Mm-hmm. Just, the, just the, from the old, person, from, from my interesting background. Now, the, this, if I know people who have really secured their house, I mean, they've got security. They've got every kind of like my grandfather. <laughs> he <had so> many. <laughs> they got locks. They got lights. They've got dogs. They've got guns. They've it's got, like they've got alarms. They got everything. And that, that burglar who He'll knows security that. is paying attention and goes too much work. I'm not getting, even, I'm not even I'll messing, I'm not even getting. messing with that house because it has so much, oh, come on, I wish that someone and would someone hear me. with a gun behind the They've door. got so much security <laughs> and so much protection on them. They've got so much happening. There is no way, there is no way I'm messing with that house. Come on. They've got a cop car sitting in the front. I know this is a police house. I know, right? They have got so much security happening around that house. It is not worth the, it's not worth the effort. No. But I'm going to go to someone who doesn't have security. Yes. I'm going to go to someone who doesn't have, I, I can, active. where I can literally yeah. see the gap in their security. Now, this is important because if the Holy Spirit lives yeah, inside of you, to this. if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you've got to know, you've got to know that he is, he is, as, he is going to make you as secure. He's going to make you so completely secure, but you've got to make, you got to make yourself the dwelling place of him. You've yeah. got to make him, you, you, I'm your house, God. Yes. I'm your house, Holy Spirit. Yes. And he's going to put up perimeter alarms. He's going to put up, I mean, I was talking to the yeah. Lord yesterday about something. He goes, you know, I, I always warn you. And I said, yes, you do, Lord. You always warn me. I'm, I'm flying on 9-11. Okay, this is, I'm flying on 9-11. And, 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 you know, the, you, you, with, with the Taliban back in place, and I'm thinking, okay, this and is... And even some prophets, supposedly. And, you know, and even I got warnings of what, was, what, what could go down on you know, 9-11. And, and I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm flying on 9-11. I didn't think about that when I booked the tickets. But praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? And then he goes, you know, he's like, well, you just go. And I, then he starts, I love him because he says, do you, this is what I want you to do. When you get there, do this, do this. And he starts talking past it. He talks so much past it that it doesn't even, I'm like, okay, I'm getting so much insight on my assignment. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> for anything to hold this assignment back. Yes. And then, and then when I'm coming back, I'm like, okay, well, and then again, something, something really interesting happens. I'm like, okay, Lord, what's, he goes, listen, you know, I always warn you. I'm like, oh, you do. You always warn me. Yes. And that's, I love that he has that he kind of positioning. He has that position in him and in me. He has that position when he lives in me that he, he's going to actually, the alarm bells are going to go off. Yes. I mean, the, it, it's, it's all going to be triggered. Yes. And he's going to tell me before. And I'm not, what he was saying is you're not going to be caught in the middle of something you don't know about. Right. Right. This is the same when we were in London. He said, woke up in the morning. He said, this is what's going to happen. The day that the uh, I was on a plane and the electricity went off, he goes, the electrical problems are going to happen. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. And then when it's electrical things starts happening, it starts to shake and rattle and roll. He says, and flicker. And he and flicker. He says, stop it. Don't allow it. Don't to allow go it. Down. Right. And so I'm, it, it's like <laughs> I love it is. because I'm his house. I'm, I know this sounds really radical. This is this is this is Christianity. This is the kingdom of God. Yes, it's very and extreme. It's, <laughs> It's very extreme. Yes, and it's, I mean, if you like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I am in it. Naturally. I'm all about it. But Bring I it. have embraced it, and I'm going to yes. embrace it more. You have embraced it, and you're in this, the, faith, the word of faith, that faith that's in you, <laughs> that is absolute. And, oh, and we need to have that absolute, and I remember I was, I was preaching, I preached a message years ago in Tulsa, which faith has an attitude. I preached it also here. Yeah. But I remember preaching in Tulsa because it's such a faith atmosphere. But they, they, that God said they had, they had lost a level of faith, which was faith actually has an attitude. It's mine, <laughs> and I'm having it now. Faith is not just, I believe, but faith has yes. an attitude. How dare yes. you? Yes. Who do you think you are yes, you trying to come up in here? Let me tell you something. You come, right? You feel right? Evil it's just things. faith has an attitude. <laughs> a refusal to That's back right. down. Amen. And when we when we realize that you have this, and I didn't intend to, this is actually not what I intended to teach oh. on tonight, but I did. I was getting there, but I, I, I just, I guess, stuck on this, this, he dwells in you. Yeah. 
the one. So so he's going to set off alarms. He's going to let you know. He's going to warn you. He's going to tell you how to oh, yeah. posture yourself. He's going to do it because he doesn't want anything to happen to yeah. his house. Now, if you and I don't pay attention, if you and I don't uh, cooperate, if you and I actually lean to uh, to the arm of the flesh, uh, then that's all going to be a different pathway. Yeah. And so it says, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. I love the King James better. It says quicken, will quicken your mortal bodies. And most people don't know the word quicken. So the give life is very, is very appropriate, but it's not the same. Because give life just means, oh, it's going to give life to, I don't know even how to interpret it. But quicken is like, it's like a, it's like a, a it's like being struck with life. Yeah, it's like sir. lightning bolts l- mm-hmm. being lit up. It's being, it's like, it's like Frankenstein. It's like yeah. Frankenstein monster and putting a big, uh, a big, you know, lightning thunder rod, rod. in, you know, lightning uh, striking rod in the, in top of your head. And all of a sudden he just, oh, but it's really coming from the inside because the Holy Spirit's in you. And all he needs is some kind of uh, a, a point of contact, yes. a point of reference. And that's where it mostly happens. He, he uses the point of reference and it's like a lightning strike yeah. and it gives you that. He's alive, right? He uh-huh. <laughs> gives you that thing, that Frankenstein monster thing. Where, but if you don't give God a light, a lightning strike, you don't give Him a place to strike. Yeah. You don't give Him that place where the word is. And so, yeah. if you are struggling, if you're struggling physically, you're struggling. You're you're sick, and you're not actually taking in the Bible all day long regarding sickness. You're Speaking not it. giving Him mm-hmm. a lightning rod. I'm going to have to end with this because I I just feel like there's, but there's a lot more I want to share. But give him a lightning rod. Give him Mm -hmm. something to strike on because you're like, I am the house of God, but how come I'm still sick? It's because you have to actually, you have to take that, this idea and you have to build a lightning rod with it and say, God, I believe and and extend it to him because that's what grace is. Grace is it functions on your extension. Whatever you extend, if you need to go this far and you you can only reach this far, grace fills up the gap. But God will know whether or not you've even built to this de- this this distance because He knows what what your capacity is. So if this is your capacity from from fulfilled word to your where you end, He knows where it is. And so you're over here going, God, why don't you heal me? He knows you didn't give enough scripture, you didn't give enough prayer, you didn't give enough. You didn't give enough fortitude. You didn't give enough. Even seek him for and, it. Right? You yeah. have to continue and push. And then when you hit that spot where you go, Lord, I'm at my wit's end. How many times have you ever had a miracle when you're at your wit's end? Yes. You've done everything Man. you know. I know that there's times we say, I'm at my wit's end. And you learn something new and you do it again. Yeah. And you do something different. And then you learn something new and you do it different. And then all of a sudden the miracle happens. Sometimes you get to your wit's end because you need to learn something new. Yeah. Sometimes you're at your wit's end because you've learned everything you need and you've pushed to the limit to what you're, how you're going to push. And that's where your faith has given you. Now, faith leads us to grace. Yeah. Faith connects to grace. So that faith in grace, that's, that's beautiful. And so when you realize that you're, you're, you're contending with your faith. And so reading the word, praying in the spirit, giving yourself to, to being watchful. Um, I'm going to, I am going to talk on that part just real quick. And then we can dig into this again as we have our next curiology. Before you do watchful, you know, I do that a lot because I feel like I hit my limit with things. Sometimes things are very devastating, very difficult in life, you know, but that's what I do. I, I say, Father, I need you to strengthen me with your might and with your power in my inner man. I receive a surge of your great power to yeah. walk in faith, to even walk in joy and in victory. And and often the Lord tells me, just join me and start rejoicing because I'm rejoicing. I already know how it's going to end. And, and so I ask him to strengthen me with might and power in my inner man. And he does it every time. I, I am strengthened them. You'll be strengthened beyond your natural capacities. And that's where we want to be. Yes. And he, he, so he says, you know, when you make that connection, that strength. And, and to me, I'm about, all about simple application to, a, to an impactful result. Mm-hmm. I don't want complicated application. I want simple application to a, yeah. a, a massive impact. Mm-hmm. And so... Reading the word. I don't, I don't want to mess around. I don't want to. I, I read the word and I 
and I read the word with an agenda. I don't read the word with a randomness. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't do Russian roulette with the word, which is hard to do when you have an app nowadays. But I don't even leave leave it to you version or anybody or any kind of random thing. I, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, what do I need to study? So yes. if I'm if I'm struggling with something, oh, he's he sees that level of death that's working in that area. If it's financial, if it's spiritual, if it's emotional, there's a level of death that's working there. How can you say that? Because the devil does nothing except for this steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. So if he's if he's functioning at all in any area, you'll know that the, you'll know by its yeah. decay and or by its its lack of attention. And sometimes that's just the devil's distraction will get you to let go of something. And he doesn't actually have access to it, but you've just, he's distracted you by a place that he does have access. Mm -hmm. And so you lose on those, on those two fronts. And so making sure that you have, you have st stable, yeah. stable, uh, word life and, 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 uh, and it leads to faith, stable, faith. St stable word life that is going to lead to faith that is going to deal with the circumstances of your life. Yeah. Right. Don't just read. I mean, there's people that's amazing that they're dealing with sickness, but they're reading on, you know, um, you know, something else that's not as 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 high priority. So mm -hmm. function on the high priority. What's priority right now? Then go and get get a topical search on that. Don't just read the passion version. I mean, everybody's just, I mean, don't just you know, I'm not picking on it. I, I, I tried to find, you know, I tried to find something today to see if I would like it. But the fact is, is get into the word of God and research, dig it out, separate it, divide yeah. it. Uh, when you when you divide the word of truth, you become someone who's able to minister in that. And when you become someone who's able to minister in that word of truth, then it builds your faith. Yeah. Your faith is built because now you become an expert in that level. And, and so what, whatever it is, become an expert in that level so yeah. that you can divide it. You can actually separate you the people what is right and what is wrong. You yeah. can divide it. If you can't divide it for other people and you can't break it down for other people, then you haven't become someone as masterful in the word. Yeah. You want to become someone as masterful Skill. because yeah. uh, every, every scripture you read, every part you read, everything you listen to in the word of God, it's building your inner man. And your inner man is what communes with the Holy Spirit. And when you, when you don't build your inner man, you could have the Holy Spirit of life inside of you. He's going to give you instruction on how to quicken your mortal body. He's going to actually, you're going to actually build that lightning rod. That, that, that other part of your lightning rod is the fact that your spirit man is the lightning rod that connects you to the spirit of God, right? The Holy Spirit wants to connect with you. And so he can't make a connection with you, even though he dwells with you, dwells within you, because you haven't built a spirit man that can hear him. A spirit man that can sense him, that spirit man that can that can commune with him, not from the outside. A lot of our communion with the Holy Spirit is external, yeah. but the communion Gosh, with the Holy Spirit yeah. that you have to learn is the communion of Him on the inside of yes. you. Him is Him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I just get that feeling, man. That just woo. It's like he just got so excited about the fact yeah. that you wouldn't just wait for the right elevation song to come on, that you would have communion with him, right. but that he could quicken you on the inside mm -hmm. and that you would have a communion with him. And you may think, what does this have to do with my body, my sickness, my healing? I want you to know he is the healer. He is the deliverer. He's the one that cast out death out of Jesus' body, brought his life back, brought it and, and raised him. Not only to earthly levels, but to heavenly levels. Yeah. He raised his body <laughs> completely to heavenly levels to where he could dwell. He could dwell here on the earth and dwell in heaven. He came between the two places. Yeah, he, he, was, he, he was he was hanging eat. out and fishing and eating with the fishermen. And then he was ascending. And I mean, he could live in two places. Go through doors. That, and that, walls. That, that's the level of quickening. My wow. goodness. This Holy Spirit is not at all limited. Ooh. <laughs> I feel a revival breaking out in my heart. Come on. And I, I just want you to know, it's very important. They say, well, he's like, if you can, if your spirit man can get to the strength level, yep. my title this tonight, strong spirit. If your spirit man can get strong, then your spirit man can commune with strength. It's hard for strength to commune with weakness. Yeah, that's no fellowship. You have to be equally yoked with him yeah. and one with him and join him. But I am joined because the Bible says, well, the Bible is saying that, but you have to really understand what the scripture is saying is that you have to not, I mean, because you can be joined with him, but if you still are connected with harlots, it says that there's a problem there, right? Yeah, so you yeah. can't just continue to do weak stuff and live weakly, not like weakly, but weak in weakness. Yeah. 
and still think you're having a solid communion with him. Carnality. It's, it's, and, and so the Bible, that there's a scripture that, that, that says that, and we're going to just paraphrase this, and I want to come back to it next week because I think there's something very potent that says it. It says, um, um, Jesus is with his disciples there in the garden of Gethsemane, and he is going to, he's saying, I need to pray, people, because I'm going into something here that my, what he's saying is my spirit man needs to be big enough to go into what I'm going into. Can you imagine Jesus having to get that kind of quickening for his, for his, for his emotions, for himself? So he says, I'm going to go. He's, and he's saying, I'm sorrowful. It's really intense, this, this reading. I'm sorrowful. In, in, I'm reading Matthew 26. I'm sorrowful even unto death in his inner core, in his inner being. Yeah. And he says, I'm, I, I feel like I'm dying on the inside. Not even physically dying. He's feeling this grief. And then he says, then he has to go and he has to go and pray. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, do this with me. And so this means that this is what he's doing. So he says, join in me with this. Be watchful and be prayerful, lest you fall into temptation. Wow. I'm going to get into that part next week. Because he says, then he says, mm -hmm. my flesh is weak. Your, my yeah. spirit it's is willing. willing. Doesn't even say it's strong, but he says it's willing. And that's an, that's an that's important right. aspect is that when you, when you tap into a willing spirit, which means it's that willfulness. It's, it's, because mm. yeah. yeah, willing is not just I'm willing, but there's willing is also a set will right? Willpower. I'm willing to pursue this or go past this to get to that. Yeah. A willfulness, right? To know that you have a willfulness to stay yeah, alive, to, to overcome, yeah. that nothing's going to stop you, that everything's going to fall to your feet. Everything's going to, they may fall to the left and the right of me, right? I may, I may but I'm going to see the reward of the wicked. Yeah. I'm going to, right? That, that willingness, the willfulness. Yeah. I don't think he's just saying, I'm willing. No, I, mean, I think he's set. saying, I'm set, I'm my, but I have a willfulness in me. Yeah. My spirit is willful. Yeah. But the strength is going to come from two different places. And we'll, we can look at that later. But one is, it's gonna, he's going to commune with the Holy Spirit. When he goes in prayer, the Holy Spirit is going to give him the strength, but he has to go into prayer with the willingness. And I think sometimes we don't pray and we're not watchful and we're not reading the word of God. Yeah. So that's, those are the three things that I want you to focus on in quickening life to your spirit. How do you, yeah. how do you pray? First, you're going to pray, God, it's your will for me to be healed. Yes. It's your will. It's his will. It's He's willing. It's going to be healed. He is willing. He's willing, and I'm willing to be healed. He's willing to heal me, and I'm willing to be healed. We can't go, well, I don't know. I mean, I've done these. That's not willing. That That's, won't work. No, you've got to. Gotta, gotta, He's willing, and I'm willing. We're both willing. Yeah. We're both watchful. I'm now going to pay attention to what's changing. My wife is, is teaching about this. What's changing? I'm going to pay attention to what's different. I want to be watchful. I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to pay attention to what's going on out there. I'm not going to pay attention to what's happening to someone else. I don't know what's happening with that person. There's some major minister that died from. I'm not paying attention because I don't know his lifestyle. I don't know what's going. I don't know who. I don't know their willingness. It's not helpful. I don't know any of that. All I know is this: I'm the house of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And He lives inside of me. Yeah. And I'm going to build my spirit Deeply. person until it's a, until it's a quickening something in my body yes <laughs> until i'm like i feel these these quick i keep giggling because i feel this quickening yes this surges we have revival in our house Woo! Amen. i feel this surging of just lightning bolts of life Amen. lightning bolts of life yes and 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 it has an effect so prayerful yep pray about what you want to see god do yeah and then set yourself on then be willing to to do it and then be watchful and i and i know i said in the different chronological chronological layout but i want you to do it i want you to be willing and i want you to be watchful and i want you to be prayerful yeah. and when what you're doing is you're waking up the next morning you're going okay lord by the you i'm going to bed and i'm saying okay god by tomorrow i want this the, at this level i want if you're if you know we were praying and continuing with people who are fighting for their for their for their physical health well if you are only can breathe this much or move this much, then tell the Lord how much quickening you're reaching out with your lightning rod of faith 
that you're going to have minister, have him minister to you while you're asleep or while you're awake or by this time of the day, by this time of the tomorrow, by this time of the week, by this time, that's how you're setting your will. By this time, I'm setting a deadline because yes. that's what the enemy has done. The enemy, people are going with COVID and the enemy, the doctors go, by this time, he, they set the will and they say, by this time, this is your mortality. By this time, this is my quickening time. I'm going to be quickened at this time. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to be quickened. I'm not going to set a mortality time. Yeah. I'm going to set a quickening time. That's, I, that's I, so good. At this time, by this time, I'm going to be quickened past this part of death. By this time, I'm going to be quickened past this part of death. By this time, I'm going to be quickened past this part of sickness. By this past, right? And that's when you start to set yeah. that quickening date with yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he's going to say, so what did, what, what did we see? We saw in, in the Holy Feast days, the three days, the death, burial, resurrection, that was a quickening time. Yes. That was, <laughs> it was already set that Jesus had to come out of the grave yeah, he knew on that day yes. because it was, he said three days. He, he was walking in front of a, I know you, some of you had to go into your, into curology, That's but this is for the rest of us. It's, he was walking past the temple and said, you gonna you say this about the temple, but let me tell you, this was torn down. And, but this temple, he starts to talk to himself, is going to be torn down, but it's going to be quickened in three days. It's going to come up. back on. <laughs> so he set a date. It couldn't go four days. It couldn't go five days. No. It couldn't go longer. It's because the date was set. Yes. And if you set days of quickening or moments yes. of quickening or time of quickening, With the Lord. You, and you set those things watchful, prayerful mm -hmm. and 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 willing set that will is this is going to happen now yes. oh my goodness come on oh my that's goodness right. that's powerful. we'll start to see miracles in your life you'll start yes. to contend and you'll start to see some amazing things happen. you know there's oh the two things because when people go to the hospitals and doctors they always tell us well the doctor says that if this uh thing doesn't work then there's nothing more they can do right it has to work so pray that it works because otherwise there's nothing more to do. Okay, so you're completely on the ability and timeline of the doctors. What we're saying is we're working with the spirit of life. We're working with the spirit of life, which will work with your lightning. Yes. With your faith. Now, yes. this is what you said was really interesting because the word temptation, I was going to talk about it, but I'll just give you a little bit of a hint. The word temptation is... It's not the word that you're going to be tempted by. It's going to be, it's the first word is experiment. You're going to be an experiment, right? So the yeah. enemy, so when a person, when a doctor experiences, like I wrote a book, Experimentalist, part of the experimentalist is to prove what your theory is, right? So God's, so you have a, a time of proving that what you believe is what you believe. And the enemy is going to come and he's going to, he's going to drop some iodine or drop whatever the testing resolve is. And you've got to be able to go, I'm going to pass this experiment. I'm going to be seen as the true yeah. believer, yeah. right? So he, so he puts in the earth, this, the, in, this, in this earth, something that is a true believer is supposed to have dominance over. Yeah. It's the temptation. By no means it's the experiment. It's the, it's the temptation. It, this is all an experiment. I know we think it's Wuhan or whatever, but it, what was it, Wuhu, whatever that. Wuhan. Wuhan. But the fact is, is this is a demonic experiment. Yes. And he's testing the church. Going and about. testing the kingdom to see if the Holy Spirit actually lives in you or you're just singing about it or you're just declaring it. Does he live in you? Spirit of life. He's right. Awakened. Because there's an experiment happening. Yes. Are you a true believer? Do you, yes. are you, do you truly By believe? By no means shall anything harm you. Right. Are you, do you have a prayer life? Do you have a word life? And do you have a willing, such a conviction? Convicted. That nothing is going to turn. Give yourself you away. Amen. To this, this is the life we live. Christianity cannot be mixed with anything else. There's really nothing in the world that has to offer life. There, no, there's no life in the world. Yes. There's only life in the kingdom of God, and uh, and we're made for this. So when I pray for people, mm -hmm. and I pray for believers specifically, I am always agreeing with the Spirit in them. That's what I. That's what I. I and I agree. That the spirit in them quickens their mortal body. That's my, I'm in agreement. Because I can, I feel that there's more healing in you than the gift of healing in me. And there's more healing working in your life. And, and if, your, if your spirit man agrees, and, and our spirit man agrees, that's two or more gathered here on the earth. 
And that quickening is going to happen. So we speak yes. to your body. Yes. We speak to someone's speak eyes. To I see someone, someone's right eye. There's some kind of, um, I don't know if it's pressure, but I command your eye to be healed. Yes. I command it to be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. I thank you, Father. Uh, someone's liver is being healed. I, I release life to your liver. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we command you to be healed. We speak life and power to each and every one of you. By the stripes of Jesus, you were made whole. And we say, take on your wholeness right now in Jesus' name. When we say, be healed. I say to uh, Sylvia and your whole family, we command Micah, we command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. I break, I break the, I break the, the, the desire of the devil in your life. Yes. I break his strategy. I never prayed that before, but that's what the Lord said. The desire of the devil. I break the desire of the devil off of you, which is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I break it in the name of Jesus. I feel yes. such quickening on that. For Rachel, I know that you said, I say break, I break the fatigue that's been coming against you. I break it in the name of Jesus. I release healing. For for anyone that's on here that needs healing, that needs, that needs deliverance, that needs freedom, we say we break the desire of the devil off of your life in the name of Jesus, and we release the desire of the Holy Spirit in you, which is to quicken you, to quicken your body. We command the symptoms of coronavirus to be, be broken. We release, we release life to you. We command any, 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 anything that came from the virus, if the vaccination, if you took the vaccine and it has left you with symptoms, we release healing. We're not just going to talk about the, the pain it caused, but we're going to deal with that. We're going to release life and quicken you. We're going to quicken that, that vaccine and its effects against you. We're going to release life to you. We release life to you now. Every symptom, every prolonged thing from the vac mm -hmm. from from virus itself we break it in the name yes. of Jesus we break the spirit of she cancer we cast it out in the name of Jesus we break we break the spirit of um uh the confusion in the mind, anything yes. that's not sound, yes. we break that in right. suicidal thoughts. We break its power Jesus. and we release the life of Jesus in those places. We thank you that you quicken with new life, mm. thank you, Lord. with new life. Let your quickening happen to God. Let your anointing be, be, be released in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. That is a finished work of the cross that you're releasing in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So so take this, All set your date, yes. set your time, set your moments. You may you may be per, by percentage, it may be by wholeness. I often do okay by 50%, we want to see this move or yeah. by this whatever. I often do wherever your faith is, whatever your faith is, whatever that person's faith is. I always try to get to where they have faith for it. Yeah. Let's believe for this. If they have five symptoms, I go okay, let's pick the worst one. Yeah. And then I so I always I always break it down the small little possibilities. Because a person has a hard time if they're done dealing with five things, they have a hard time processing. Was it? How do I deal? How do I deal with all five things? But if we focus on one thing, that one thing, we get the breakthrough in that one thing. It gives faith to the other things to go away. And so we just chip away at it. The yeah. devil hates the chipping away. One symptom at a time. Yeah. And there's almost mo always more faith to get by hearing the word of God, especially preach. So go back to the curology messages. Here on Facebook, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And then get into the Word and study it. Don't let you version do your work for you. You become a student of the Word of God. Get into the original text if you have to. Study until you've got it. Come on. And can I, and can I just, I want to just tell a little testimony about your doggy. Yes. I mean, this, this <laughs> spirit of life is amazing. You know, my dog... I think ate something. I don't know. I did buy a new treat for her. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, real, I didn't even tell you this. I, I looked at the bag after she had really bad symptoms. I was like, okay, I don't know if she's going to make it. That's how bad it was. Uh, super bad. I don't even want to tell you all the details. It was so bad. Well, I knew when you asked me to pray, you were concerned. I was like, okay, we're, we were going to get in the car and go somewhere. And I actually was afraid to open the door when we came home. Because I was like, ah, she's probably not alive. And what are the kids going to say, you know? And I'd done everything in my power to make her comfortable. But I saw that the, the bag that I would bought was expired by two day, two years. So I have to go back to that uh, store and let them know. But anyway, you know, she had a lot of allergies, but this, I don't know what was going on, but she was really not even barely moving. So I told Pastor Tracy, I need you to pray for my dog. 
I need you to pray for Zoe. And I called her Zoe for a purpose. You said, I need you to, I need you to, yeah, like. Lay hands on her. Lay pray for her because she's in a very bad way. I didn't even tell him anything, but. And I was like, Lord, she would never ask me. No, because he she doesn't never... really touch dogs. No, oh, I touch, I, yeah, it's just, I don't. But, and I said, uh, I said, God, you really. And he just said, you know, you, they, you know, quicken. Just this release life. House. Yeah. And this is your house, and she's under your house and under your roof. So if you tolerate sickness there, then you're tolerating sickness. And so, I mean, God healed her. God. I God. actually, I actually came down, and I was looking for Sophia. And I'm sorry, we're done already, so oh, if you have to go. Know. But I was looking for, I was looking for Sophia, and I was like going to have Sophia hold her. But Sophia was packing and finishing up her packing, so we can leave. And so I, I was like, man, I gotta hurry up. And so I just, I just. Grabbed. I grabbed her and I went and got the oil. <laughs> anointing. <laughs> and I anointed, I put oil on her. And she's But she's probably shocked that you even carried her around. At first she wasn't even trying to she wasn't gonna come to me. I'm like, come come here. She's like, mm mm. She I took it took like twenty times I had to call her to, to me to come to me. She came. And she finally like she was she also was like very this. weak. Yeah. I don't know. You mess around with me too much. So Anyway, she got healed. So I want you to know if God can Instantly heal, healed. if Not God can like heal later. a little poodle dog. No, right away, right away. Like, it, and it was obvious. It was like obvious. She was completely healed. She started wagging her tail. She started running outside. I was like, we have little rabbits sometimes. And we have rabbits right now in the backyard, wild ones. And she started chasing them. I was like, what? She was not moving hardly. She was just on her blanket. And she was instantly healed. So this quickening power, the Holy Spirit doesn't think like, oh, well, that's just a dog. Or uh, that's just your finger or your eye. You know, whatever. This is not unto death. You can live with it. No, no. He doesn't want any death. And he's very active. The spirit of infirmity seeks about whom he may devour. The Holy Spirit is looking where he can release life. And that is just wonderful. I love that. And so I want you to know, I, when we pray, <clears throat> we actually believe, and I believe that anybody that I pray for in my house gets healed. I believe that anyone that I pray for in our church gets healed. I believe that anyone that I pray for in curology, these are the things that God has given me mandates over. Any ministers that have submitted themselves to us. I don't actually ever doubt whether or not there should be immediate and That's I always right. I always approach it with the same authority and so if you are under our authority you have that same that same victory yes. and so walk in that yes amen, amen. connect with that faith amen Hallelujah. we love you all and uh, we will be here again on Tuesday join us on Sunday we're going to be uh, at a Kent location. Yeah. And so you can find out by texting the word church to 206-567-1400. Find out where we are and find out where the locations are near you, where you live. And then also we will be online. But it's going to be a really great Sunday. Got lots of fun stuff planned. And then tomorrow I'll be on uh, Berry Buster. You, so just look. Is that look. on your Facebook page? It's going to be on my Facebook page. I think it's on my... I think it's on my um, influencers berry buster i don't know some one of those we'll pages you'll look and if you i think it will pop up and what then it time? will be on berry buster it will also be on the berry buster uh youtube uh at 12 o'clock noon on pacific time yeah so it's gonna be fun all right nice all right we'll see you let's continue to build the kingdom of god stay healthy amen. stay wealthy stay blessed be extreme amen be extreme <laughs>